Quilting Family. We're back with our next installment on the coffee theme sew along for our coffee quilt. Now this is the center block that we worked on last week, but you can see there's two borders that go around this coffee pot block before we put on our blocks. Now I was working with my scrap box and I didn't have enough of this yellow. So I pulled another yellow. I thought, well, it's yellow, it's got some blue, it, it'll be fine, it'll work. It's got some purple in there too, which kind of goes with some of the center stuff. So I figured it would work. And it's a good practice piece, right? To, if, you're, if you need somebody's uh, a gift or something very quickly, you can practice on this or you can put it as a kitchen wall hanging. You know, it's, it's kind of, it's fun. It'll be fun. So the biggest problem with this block and you might already see this. This yellow fabric was stretching. It didn't matter how I put it on there or how it was a scrap. It was an older scrap and I just said, okay, I'll work with it. I'll ease everything in where it needs to be for size wise. Once we start quilting it, it wasn't puckering enough to make a difference when we do some, let's say, heavier quilting. It'll look fine once it's quilted. Because what the, the term they use, it'll quilt out, it's fine. So what we're going to do today is we're going to put our borders on our coffee pot block we made last week. So now my borders, the inner side border where this yellow is different, is going to be the same background color. So this will make this coffee pot float. So that'll be really cool, cool effect. Now with the four patches, and you can see these are four patches, basically they're blue and black on the mock-up. Remember this is the mock-up, this is the real one. The mock-up, you have to be careful if you're doing a traditional four patch with too light, too dark, because you're going to have some of them that you can't sew together because you want the four patch light and dark to go around. But if you're just doing the random scrappy four patches like I did, it doesn't matter. And this is actually easier where you just do random and scrappy. So let's get started. I'm just so anxious to get you to uh, start you guys on sewing on borders. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the sides. Now, the easiest one to do is the spout because there's only one spot here where you have to worry about your seams flipping or, you know, anything weird. So what you're going to do is you're just going to line this all up the best you can. And if you're easing, you're easing in. Don't, don't stress about having to ease in. Everybody, everybody makes a little bit of mistakes sometimes, you know, it's, um, uh, it's one of those days and it doesn't matter what you do, it's going to be wrong. So you might as well, you know, enjoy the process. Don't get stressed out over stuff that, you know, you can't manage. Now, when we're doing the sides, now I've cut this so that it should balance out. But right now, it looks like I have a little bit of ease to work in. So I just kind of pull both fabrics a bit. Kind of look for center. Ease is really important thing to learn. So you kind of, you know, you work it back and forth and you see, okay, I'm going to put there another pin. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. Um, what you want to do is you want to make sure that the ease is, the excess is spread throughout the strip that you're doing right if you do have an ease issue because remember this this is the first border the second border has to be the right size right so you need this to go in the right size now because we're easing in the this smaller piece it goes on the bottom right because that's where you need it to be eased in from okay and I've lost my foot pedal it's gone forever there it is And when you're doing stuff like this, don't don't sew over your pin. That would be really bad. Okay. And I'm just gonna take my little plug and move it along. There we go. 
And sometimes too, um, if you're trying to ease in and your machine just won't do it, change over to a walking foot if your machine has one. Because that's um, another way of getting the ease, it to ease in properly without puckering. Especially if some of your fabric is a little thicker. You know, if you were using a, a, a pillow case, the stuff that you make pillows out of, right? Okay, so there we are. There's one side on. And we'll get the other side on. Now I just, I'm just going to finger press these out, you know, away from the center. And I only have to do the very edges because when I put the top and bottom on, I want that edge to be flat. So now we grab the other one and we center it and we pin it. Now this one, I'm hoping that I get to, to sew with the handle on the, the up, this side up, because that's where the seams are. And I don't want my seams flipping around. Okay. And it's gonna be about there, okay. There we go. And there's a little ease. There's a little bit of ease. Maybe my um, quarter inch is just a wee bit chubby, I guess. But that's okay. All right. Now, again, we're going to put the longer side down. And this is all about making it fit and making it work and you know, having fun, making something cute. I've already figured out how I'm going to quilt this. I'm kind of excited, anxious to get to the quilting part. But I uh, would love to see. We have to figure out. I'm not sure if we want to do a Facebook group or if we want to do um, like a website where everybody posts their pictures. I'm not sure how we're going to do this yet, so. And we want to make sure that oh, a coming seam like flat. And it's easing in beautifully. Okay, last bit. There we go. This is such a lovely African cotton to work with. It just cuts so nice, it irons out so nice. It's a little, here. Now, again, we're going to uh, just press along the, the top and bottom. Like, we'll get a good iron to it in a bit. Just draw your nail along there. And now we're going to take the top and bottom pieces. So these are the longer pieces, but they're skinnier. They're only three and a half width. Now, all the cutting instructions for, for the borders you're adding they were in last week's, but I'll add the border piece, pieces again, just because I'm sure, you know, if you were just sewing along and you had these extra pieces and well, yeah, they're for the border that we're going to show this week. So, but I'll add them in again and there's also a second border of 44 patches and there we go. There we go. Okay. Last bit goes down here. Okay. So this these borders, yeah, you take your time pinning them, you know. Take your time pinning them and the panel is the bigger piece. Hang on. I'll just get this a little more flat. And the panel is the bigger piece for this, but that's okay. All right. Well, we're just gonna put this, and get this as quickly as we can. There. Oh, cut off my plug. 
Okay. Now we do have um, some ease, like on this side, like I've got uh, a, a bubble of stuff here that I've got to ease in. And my feed dogs do their job. It works out perfectly. And I'm just, I felt that seam flip. Nope, it didn't flip. Okay, let's get the next one done. Okay. And like this. we've got the bottom now to do and we'll do the bottom and then we'll give it a good press before we put on our, our four patches that way it's it'll lie everything will lie flat as possible so let's start by making sure this lines up here okay It would be interesting to see what you guys are doing. Um, my husband and I have had a very busy week, uh, or last couple of weeks. This is being filmed uh, about near the mid-August when we're filming this. And uh, I was interviewed by Stephen Bland of Bland Designs, and he also runs a YouTube channel called The Idiot Quilter. And he was he has been so kind and so so supportive in our venture here and I want to do a big shout out to him because wow that was that was very kind I'm actually very impressed at how kind people are in the quilting community on YouTube it's um, wonderful here so once I get this scene done and again this one looks pretty good this one's not either the top or the bottom is not you know, bubbles or anything. Just have, now I have to worry about the seams I see underneath not flipping. And we're good. Now, I have a whole bunch of different ideas now for other blocks that are good scrap busters for our channel. So I'm kind of excited about that. I don't know, I was hoping you guys, I'm hoping we would get a little further in on scrap busting, but we'll get there, we'll get there, it's all good. Right. Oh, I'm being dragged. The work is sometimes when you get a bigger block like this, you have to be careful about being dragged right off the, the table. Okay, so here we are, the first border on. And I'm going to take this off to the ironing board. And I'll give you guys a, a peek at it before we look and put on our, our sew, a good look and peek. And then we'll sew on our, our, our four patches. Okay, I'll be right back. So I've ironed the center border out flat and this, this African cotton just irons beautifully. It's, um, it's got a little, it's very soft hand to it. It's not stiff like some of them are. Now I've pinned both sides because I think you guys know how to pin. And of course it slides off. And I've pinned both sides to with my um, with my random things. Now you'll notice there's no seams that match up this seam to this seam here. There's a seam that runs right along here, and it there's no matching that has to happen. So that was kind of a design choice. I decided, you know, the less matching of seams that we have to do, the easier it is for people that are beginning you know when sometimes that they at least when they get a couple of quilts under their belt they're more likely to um, 
you know, be, be looking at, oh, let's, let's do another quilt. Let's see if I can learn something else. Now, there is a little bit of easing going on here again because I'm now putting in four and a half and you can see all the seams on these little four patches. Now I've spun them open, you know, so that they're gonna lie as flat as they can. And now when we press this, we're going to be pressing to with the seams going into that blue border that blue, the floating border for the coffee pot, because there's a lot of seams and it's naturally going to want to flip in, right? So we, we can do that. We can make it flip in, that's fine. And I just want to make sure it lies nice and flat, so all the seams are going the right way, and it continues to lie flat. And here we go. This is going to be such a cool quilt when we're done. Okay, and now we just do the other side. And I want the one with this, not only are we easing in just a tad, we're just easing in just a bit, we're also making sure that the seams are all lying the, the right way. So that's why this is on top, right? So now, oh, let's get this other side done. This, I made an oversized couch throw. This size is an oversized couch throw because I have grandchildren. So the last border, because we're going to put the coffee cups on, co coffee cups and sugar bowl and creamer, they're all going to go on the next round after the, after the four patches. But uh, there's going to be an outer border after that. And I'm going to leave that optional for you because I like oversized uh, couch throws. Our family are big people, we're not little people. We have three little people, three little grandchildren that want to cuddle with you under a quilt. Well, if you make a couch throw, the normal size of a couch throw, there's not room for everybody and to be able to read a book to them. So I make my stuff a little bit bigger, which is okay, it's all fine. It'll work. And when you do a random four patch like this and you put your coffee cups up against it, if your coffee cups are the same color as let's say this this background here, the you know your background yellow, don't worry about it. It'll it'll be fine. It'll be fine. There's gonna be some places that are gonna be matching up with other, you know, there's gonna be fabric touching the same fabric and I'm out of bobbin. Oh, I lost bobbin chicken. Oh well. So here we go. There, put that out. And take that out. And I'm, what I do as well, what I'm going to show you guys, every time I change a bob and I really get in there with an unused makeup brush and I pull out as much lint as I can. That saves my machine from going to the spa and having issues. I just bring my thread up. There we go. And, and, okay, where did I end? Oh, right, right there. Okay, so now I find my end. It's really important that whenever you change your bobbin to clean out that area, especially if you're using cotton, cotton thread and you're quilting, let's say you're quilting and you're quilting with cotton thread, every time you change your bobbin, you change Get that, wipe that bobbin area out the best you can. It'll make a difference on how your machine performs. You know, so. Okay, last but not least, this little bit here. And. Yeah. Now, with the top and bottom, or the, the sides that we're sewing on right now, not the top and bottom, those are nine four patches each, right? There's nine on the top, and not, or nine on the left side, nine on the right side. On the, the top and bottom, you sew 11, right? So that's why you need two 11s and two nines is 40, 
40 of them. So now I'm going to pin on the great big ones. Here, hang on. Let me get this. Okay. This goes on the top, I guess. That, that works. Goes on the top. And like I said, I never, I didn't, uh, wor I didn't worry about uh, stuff touching, you know, because black's going to touch black and red's going to touch red. Don't worry about it. I mean, if you really want to, you can flip it around and have, you know, different colors on the one side, but you're still going to have red on red on the other side. So I, yeah, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just make it happen. It's two different red prints and it's two different black prints. It's fine. So, here we go. So, we're going to make sure, though, that this is working as flat as it can. Because now we have to meet. In order to make that four patch go around the corner, you have to match points. Right? Right here and right here. So, those are two points you pin. And then we go to the other end. And we pin. Make sure that this pin works. Because you've got another one over here on this side. Right here. Okay. You get that as close as you can. There. I hope you can see that I'm pinning to meet points. Right? So now we go back to, okay, we got to get this kind of centered and working. And, and sometimes it's going to work out for you and sometimes it's not. There it is. Close enough. And there we go. And just put a few pins in just to hold it because it's, it's a pretty long piece here. I didn't realize I'd actually made four borders on this quilt. So you're going to get really good with borders by the time you're, you're done with this. So here we go. Let's put this one in. And as soon as you cross that one stitch down or the needle down on the other side of that point you have to meet, you can, you know, you can stop, readjust, get one point over, pull out your pin, and now you get to okay, ease in the rest. Yeah, there's very few hard bits, very few hard bits on this quilt. I decided to make it very user friendly or beginner friendly and, um, you know, standard size pieces so that your, you know, any leftover bits you have, you can, you know, make two and a half inch strips out of, you know, so. Okay, I'm just going to pull that up here so it doesn't fall off. And hopefully you get all the little bits in, of the fabric in this round. Okay. It's going to fall. Ah! I hope you can still see this. I'm just about at the end. And then we're on the last border. We're on the last little block. Okay. There we go. Now, we'll pin the other side. In the bottom. I'm gonna, yeah, I can say you get really good at doing borders by the time you're done this quilt. <laughs> oh well. Okay. Now, okay. This one will go like this. Yes, it will. Okay. Oh, yep. Okay, so now. 
I know it looks like a great big piece. Well, it, essentially it is a great big huge block. And what you're going to do is you're going to match your ends again. That is really important. There's no easing. What you're trying to do is match points, right? And then you match the next point. Now see those two nest together. This bottom, the two blues and where that seam is. And you just nest that real tight in there and we're good. And then you go to the other side and again you're nesting. You're nesting an edge. There we go. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you're going to go like that. Here, you're just going to push that one out of the way. And here we go. And now, we find out how much easing we have to do. I hope this works. It'll work, it'll work, it'll be fine. There we go. And... We're not that out, not far out. On, on larger quilts, you can be out like quite a bit and you're like panicking as to how you're going to ease all of that in. But uh, when you're on the outer border, here I'm just going to pull this one up just a bit to get this all eased in. Right way, here we go. On the outer border, I uh, when we're doing a pieced, I'm doing a pieced outer border so on this quilt for me and that will be optional for you it's up to you what you want to do with your quilt because i know this thing is getting big right i know this thing will be big but i usually stay stitch around a piece border because this is not the outer border there's another border that's got to go around it i don't stay stitch around the outer edge because sometimes you need that play in um in your blocks just to just to make this work you know mm -hmm. okay there we go that line and you match your points because the line is perfectly nested cross that line and you go all the way to the end and now we'll get ready for the ta-da moment are you ready to see the ta-da moment on our coffee pot block well here it is it is gorgeous just gorgeous here let me see if i can't get this just a little bit closer for you there is it, do you th do you like it do you think it's cute can you imagine when our coffee uh cup blocks and sugar bowl and creamer are going to be around this now that'll be adorable so one of the things i i wanted you to understand is that we go around when we're going around anything with a, a little four patch whether it be your absolute outer border or whatever. The twisting that you do for a four patch, where you know it's you do that spread it open and it swirls one way, all your four patches swirl one way, and then you sew them together and they swirl the other way. When you're doing the four patches on the corners, they swirl around. 
I'm just going to get a corner here. There it is. I'm going to get a corner here. And I'm going to ha ask my cameraman to help hold up this corner. So it kind of swirls around the corner. It works so it's all going to lie flat. Okay, and that's something that you you know remember to remember when you're when you're doing working with four patches around like you're swirling them swirl them around the corner otherwise you're going to end up with a little bulky knot in the middle of your corners so the next thing that goes on is the coffee cups so and sugar bowl and creamer so i'm excited i hope you are too come on back next week and we'll be putting those on with a surprise piece border that I'm going to be doing. So that'll be, it'll be fun and it uses up a lot of your scraps. Okay, so everybody have a wonderful week. Take care, bye. If you have questions about what you saw in this video or you have ideas for content or something you wanna see us do, please put those comments in the description below. But also, while you're there, like, share, and subscribe with your friends. That would really help us out. Okay, I want to thank you and have a great day.